go ahead and tell you uh, this, this particular sermon is one that I, I know for a fact the enemy does not want you to hear. Uh, I, I usually know when these things happen is because I go to bed at night early enough, tired, and I just can't sleep. No reason for it. It happens periodically. I just lay in bed, and I, my body refuses to fall asleep. And I can almost always guarantee the reason why is because the enemy wants me to be exhausted by the time I come into the pulpit, because he thinks that making me exhausted will keep me from declaring God's truth to you, and somehow you won't hear it. But here's what I love about our God. He has this uncanny ability to make Satan's plans backfire in his face. So two things are going to happen today. One, you're going to listen because you know the enemy's trying to keep you from listening. And two, I'm going to preach with more passion than ever because I know God has a message to deliver to you that will change you. He wants to teach you something that now I know Satan, Satan is scared to death for you to receive. The interesting thing about the message this morning is it is all about how we overcome the attacks of the enemy. It's just too perfectly timed. It's these times where Satan makes these mistakes, too perfectly timed for him to do what he did for me not to realize that God wants to deliver a message to you, and I'm going to have the privilege of delivering that to you, to teach you what you desperately need, how to have a life of victory and power, and how to overcome the obstacles the enemy keeps throwing at you. It's exactly what I'm going to give you today. There, there are some of you right now in this room, some of you watching online, and your, your life feels like anything except powerful. It, it doesn't feel like you have victory in your life. It doesn't feel like you can overcome. It doesn't feel like your faith is actually accomplishing anything in your life. There are some of you in this room right now, some of you watching online, and you are on the verge of abandoning your faith because you're going, it just doesn't seem to be working. Nothing seems to be changing right now. I pray, and nothing seems to happen. I go to church and I don't get any better. I keep falling into the same sins. I'm good for a little bit and then boom, I just fall right off again. I, I, can't say, I can't stay on the straight and narrow. I can't walk with God. Apparently this faith thing has no power in my life. But every once in a while, you find somebody and their life just seems to be different. I bet you every single one of you could point to somebody and you're saying, when I grow up, I want to be just like them. And you might, you might already be in your 50s, but you're saying, when I grow up, I want to be just like them. Because there's something about that person that they just seem different. When they pray, it just seems like God answers. Th these people have miracle stories to tell. Like the average person maybe has one. They seem to have dozens and dozens of stories of how they've seen God move. You can look at their life and you know it's not easy, but at the same time you see them have peace that surpasses understanding. You see joy even in the middle of hard circumstances. And you're saying, I want that. I, I want to have a faith like them. I, I want to be strong like them. And the question you'll ask is, what do they have that I don't have? Why does their faith seem to work for them, but it doesn't work for me? Listen, I, I believe there are a lot of you this morning who are asking yourself that question, but it's the wrong question. The wrong question is, what do they have that I don't have? But the right question is, what have they been willing to give up that I, I have not been willing to give up? That's the real question. So I'm going to give you a principle right here. You should probably write this down because I think it could really change you. Simple but meaningful. Here's what it is. You get out of the faith what you put into the faith. It's like investment principle, basic investment. The more you invest in the faith, the more you get out of the faith. If you put all of yourself into the faith, your faith in Christ, you see the power of God in every area of your life. But when you begin to hold sections back, then you miss the power of God. The reason why you look at some people and their lives seem to have more powers than yours is because they've given more of themselves to God than you have. That's the big difference between the two. Just last night I was reading, I had not planned to share this, but last night I was reading a, a, a quote from C.S. Lewis and it said, he cannot bless us unless he has us. When we try to keep within us an area that is our own, we try to keep an area of death. Therefore, in love, he claims all. There's no bargaining with God. That's it right there. Every time we try to hold an area back, we are holding back an area of death. God says, I don't let you hold anything back because I want to give life into every area of your existence. There is no bargaining with God. And one of the chief ways Satan comes against us is he tries to get us to compromise in our faith. Compromise is just us holding back. Think about what a compromise is. Compromise is, okay, I'll, I'll keep this, but I'll give you that. That's great between siblings, just yesterday, I'm talking to a couple of my kids. Like, okay, we got to come up to a compromise here. Let's find a, a way for you both to get what you want. Compromise is great between siblings. It is not great between you and God. 
We don't get to bargain and compromise with God and say, okay, God, I'm going to hold this back right here, but I'll give you that. See, that's us trying to find what's the bare minimum I got to give to God to make him happy. There's no bargaining with God because everything we hold back is just a place of death, and he knows it. The people that you see who experience power in their lives are those who give themselves entirely to the Lord. 